So we insert our CD into our drive and boot off that. We'll then be presented with a menu and choose install PBX in a flash, the recommended option. That should then boot us up and get an IP address via DHCP. The first part of the install needs very little input. I think we just put in a time zone and a root password. I'll set my time zone to Europe slash London. Obviously set yours to wherever you need it to be. And then we enter the root password. This is the one we'll use for SSH, etc. That should be all the input we need to do now till the second part of the installation. That will now install CentOS for us. Um, after that it will reboot and we'll continue with the second part of the installation which is the PBX in the flash side where it compiles all the software. Um, we may as well fast forward this video now and I'll come back once we've rebooted. Right, we've now rebooted and we're just launching into the actual install for the PBX in the flash side of things. It'll download the latest now. We'll choose that install the PBX in the flash now. It's now going out on the internet and checking that they're available and it will start to download the payloads. We agree to the terms and conditions of course and choose the purple version. That's the stable. You can of course choose whatever version you like but certainly for production I'd only be using purple at the moment. there it's downloaded it successfully. It checks to make sure we're getting a genuine payload from the PBX in a flash website. It's fairly straightforward. Uh, the only reason for the video is some people like the video when it's new. They're new to our VoIP. If it had trash part way through it just would have deleted the trashed one now and restarted it. And again it's double checking that it's the latest one. Now for some reason it's telling me that this is 20641 which it's not. It's 20643. I've double checked it so I'm installing that anyway. It updates while it's uh, downloading anyway. And then we tap the enter key to start the configuration wizard. a few second banner where they ask for donations and then we press enter again. Uh, we don't want it to use menu config so we choose no here. And then we just type Y to verify that. And choose our time zone now for the PBX in a flash. I choose C London and then Y to continue. I think it just puts that in a PHP any file. And now I'm going to choose a freebie PBX 2.10. It's the first time I actually started using this. I used to use 9. But now they're using 10 as a 2.10 as the stable. We may as well use that.
that's how we're going to generate our password. It'll force us to read to confirm that we've read this by typing in a code. And now I'm going to choose to put my own password in B. And again, we have to retype the password to confirm it. There are some password strength checks it uses on this. I don't know exactly what they are, but mine's quite secure anyway. It just check, presents the last options to us to confirm them. We just choose yes, and it will continue on with the setup. Now this does say, take some time, and it will also at points appear that it may have hung particularly towards the end. You just get a flashing cursor in the top left hand side of the screen, but there's actually nothing wrong. It's going to compile asterisk uh, from source and Dardy. Um, most people these days don't use that. It's that's for when you have a uh, some type of card to co connect to the PSTN, be it an analog for a plain old telephony. Port, I think X100 the cards used to be called a lot of them that do that or the Digium ones themselves or you've got the ISDN type cards basic and primary and this is the stuff it's gonna compile for them that most of us don't actually use nowadays certainly we wouldn't be using them on anything we've got out on the internet this would purely apply to people who've got in-house installations and they wanted to connect to the telephone line anyway. I'll speed that up because there's nothing really, and it does take a while. You're looking at the best part of, I think it was about over half an hour on this box, and depending on the hardware you've got, it may be a lot quicker than that or a lot longer. Uh, I'll speed it up to the end. Right, once we've booted back up into our new installation now, we've finished uh, the PBX and the Flash installs now installed and we left back at the root login screen after a reboot of the CentOS. It just looks like it's a CentOS installation, but we've got the PBX login prompt. Most of us are going to want to change from a DHCP address to a static IP address. Now. There may well be easy way, easier ways than doing this, but the one I know is to just log into the console. It's showing you the IP address there, 192.168.1.155. Um, now, I've, I know which addresses my router dishes, and I know that 1.30 is free, so that's what I'm going to do. So I just type setup on here. I'm going to have the 1.30. And now I change it's a network configuration, run tool, device configuration. Yes, I'll choose the Intel. So it's just pressing enter there. And I'm going to change it from DHCP to static. And that's 192.168.1.30 on here with a 255.2. Zero subnet mask. The default gateway is dot one. And I'm going to use the good old DNS servers of Google's at eight dot eight dot four dot four and four dot two dot two dot one. And you could use this. It's only your uh, local IP and gateway you're going to need to change really to suit yourself. That's OK. Tab it to save. And just check that DNS. Should be OK in there. Yep. 
we'll leave it at that there's no problem with that so we want to save and quit and then quit uh, I don't know if that sets that straight away let's have a see might need a reboot yeah it needs a reboot or it needs a network restart but we might as well do a clean reboot and so I know that I'm going to be coming back into the 1.30 address um, so I will be coming back and using SSH to access it with right uh, we've rebooted uh, I'll get used to me ferret by the way that's Lucy uh, I have her as my screensaver thing me background now when we come at we've we've now booted up our machine it's I know mine's on the 1.30 and yours is going to be on whichever one IP uh, whichever static IP you've set it to uh, so now we need to access it via a web browser using the password we chose when we did the second part of the install the PBX and the flash install now this new 2.10 version that we saw of the free B PBX it, you, it's something to do with Google Chrome um, and you'll see what happens in a minute here I'm going to access it through Internet Explorer uh, 1.30 and it redirects there we want to choose down the bottom here where it says users click on it and we'll get the admin box there we've got the FreeBX admin panel we choose that and I'll go to fill it in anyway the username is maint and the password is whatever you want yeah, whichever you set during the install now it's, it's going to tell me something about chrome frame here this is what I wanted to show you unfortunately some features may not work correctly in this browser and it suggests that we activate chrome frame which will offer offer the richest possible experience um, someone I'm sure out there who's watching this video will know what this actually is but it installs some sort of plugin to Explorer um, and once it's installed it uses it for everything I think not just the free PBX that's something I don't really want so I'm actually going to use Chrome um, and you might want to think about doing that yourself many of you may already use Chrome um, and so login again main which is short for of course maintenance and then our password out of the box PBX in a flash is quite secure um, everything should be fairly well configured to protect us nothing should be exposed on the internet we're all up and running now um, and ready to go configuring it I'll call that on this video a day and on the next video we'll get it to do something useful I'll create a basic extension I'll hook up a phone I've got behind me there a Yealink T20P it is yeah T Tango 20 Papa T20P uh, they're quite a good little phone work with most NAT usage cases we'll be looking at NAT as well um, and how it may affect us when we're connecting to things on the internet but I'll leave that for the next video this is our install done we're there up and running now um, don't even know on this new thing where we go to even start configuring let's have a quick look we're gonna have extensions somewhere soon find out anyway see you soon